What problem is Gnosis trying to solve and why did you start Gnosis? Yeah, so we started Gnosis um, already at the beginning of 2015 uh, as part of Consensus, which is a venture production studio uh, based in New York City. And we started Gnosis with the goal of creating a prediction market framework to make prediction markets available for everyone. Um, so that's what we were focusing on within the first two years almost. Uh, and yeah, we, we were the first DApp that was actually live on the Ethereum mainnet. That was not a Ponzi scheme. <laughs> so yeah, we, we created the first prediction market that was traded on the Ethereum mainnet. And at that time, we created a prediction market to predict um, yeah, the outcome of the uh, crowd sale of Augur. <laughs> And since then, uh, like the focus of Gnosis has changed a bit. We do now more than, than uh, just prediction markets. Mm. We also develop uh, smart contract based wallets and we develop exchange technology. How did your ex expansion into other areas, how did that happen? Well, this was, uh, well, we were f fortunate with our own uh, token sale. So we did our ICO at the uh, April last year. Mm -hmm. This was before yeah, crypto exploded. And so we were then suddenly in a situation where we had access to a lot more resources than we initially planned to have. So we, we didn't raise like an enormous amount of money. We raised 12.5 million, which is also huge, but mm -hmm. wouldn't have allowed us to do everything that we do today. Um, but because now we suddenly had a lot more resources, we were able to also build core infrastructure that's still required to actually make the whole economy work. Mm -hmm. And this is still required and we feel like we have also a duty as one of the bigger projects in the space to contribute to core technology to enable uh, yeah, the entire economy to grow. Tell us about prediction markets for the average person out on the street of Seoul. What are prediction markets? Why is it important? Sure. So prediction markets are actually simple. Uh, people always think it's uh, super sophisticated, uh, but they're in the end just a very simple uh, mechanism. What they actually what they allow you to do is to trade outcomes of future events, uh, and this future event can be almost anything. Like for example, an election. Like it could be a prediction market about who will become the president of the United States. And then you would have different outcomes of this event. One could be Hillary Clinton, one could be Donald Trump. Um, and it's always important that those outcomes cover all possibilities. Mm -hmm. And then those outcomes, they can be traded. And the value is always between zero and one. One meaning the outcome will occur, zero meaning it won't. And the price is basically always between zero and one, and we represent the probability. Yeah? So if, for example, Donald Trump tokens trade at 70 uh, or 70 cents, then you know the market uh, believes that Donald Trump will win with a 70% probability. And now you, as someone who wants to trade on this market, you have to decide for yourself if this is reasonable or not. If you, disagree, if you disagree with what the market predicts, then you have a financial incentive uh, to participate in this market because you can earn a profit. So let's say you believe that Donald Trump will win for sure, then you have a financial incentive to buy all the Donald Trump tokens until the market price is also at one, you know, mm -hmm. when, Mark, when Donald Trump basically trades for one dollar. Um, and then when Donald Trump actually is going to be elected, then you can redeem uh, one dollar for each Donald Trump token. So if you bought it, let's say for 70 cents, you can redeem it for one dollar, so you made 30 cents profit. Mm -hmm. So prediction markets are a zero-sum game, yeah? so meaning that um, everything that someone is winning, someone else has to lose. Uh, and yeah, that's, that's a, it's just a very core mechanism. We also, on an abstract level, you could also call it conditional payouts. Yeah? You, you get a payout under a certain condition, in the Donald Trump example, uh, you get a payout for Donald Trump tokens under the condition that Donald Trump uh, was elected as the next president. And this is just very fundamental, a very fundamental concept that can be applied in many different ways. Mm -hmm. 
So to give you some more examples, um, you could use it to incentivize behavior. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So I could start a prediction market um, predicting um, what kind of food we'll eat tonight. Yeah? So I could make a prediction market. Um, will we have pizza tonight? And uh, then if I really want to have pizza tonight, then I would basically predict that we won't have pizza tonight. Mm -hmm. And anyone who can make it happen that we have pizza tonight could take the other side and okay. order pizza for us. Uh -huh. And so it could be used as some sort of incentive mechanism as well. Um, just another possibility. It can also be used as a hedging instrument mm. because if you think about insurances, insurances are essentially kind of bets. Uh, you, you kind of, if you get a fire insurance and you're betting that your house will burn down. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and yeah, this is also another way how prediction markets could be applied. So there's really a variety of possibilities. Um, and that's why uh, we just want to build the core technology to enable all of them. We don't really build the apps themselves. We just build the core infrastructure and then uh, hopefully we can incentivize everyone else to use this core infrastructure to build the other concrete applications. Why do we need uh, decentralized prediction markets? There were prediction markets that existed before and they worked okay to a certain extent, but... Sure, sure. So if you think about it, so uh, a prediction market or any kind of market uh, benefits from inclusion. So it's all about liquidity, right? Um, and with blockchain, uh, we have for the first time in history, the possibility to create something called a global liquidity pool. So currently, there are prediction markets. So for example, uh, sports betting, like peer-to-peer -peer sports betting is also some sort of prediction market. Um, and currently, you have like different providers for these in different countries, um, all providing the same, but all of them are siloed. Yeah? And um, it would be much, much better if you would have one common platform for all of them participate in the same market, aggregating all the liquidity. And the reason why this is, uh, is useful is because, um, because then you aggregate the information of all of them into one. Yeah. Mm. This is what you want to have in a prediction market. Uh, what a prediction market allows you to do is to aggregate the information because everyone who participates in this market, he has to back up uh, his opinion with money. He has to stake money. Um, and the more people do this in the same market, the more trustworthy this information will get.